Hello, today's review is on the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 STM lens. I'm going to talk about astrophotography and then also just an overall general review. Okay, the first thing I really want to brag about is the price. At the time I purchased this it was under $120 and that's an excellent price for this lens. It's a seven bladed circular design allows for a lot of bokeh which is your uh, background blur in your images. It has super spectral coatings and um, that eliminates a lot of ghosting and flare in your images. It's really great. Um, it's got a gear type stepping motor that's what the STM stands for and it's relatively quiet also so that's not going to affect your uh, your video too much. So let's start out with this photograph I took of the Orion constellation. Uh, more appropriately the uh, Orion's belt and you can see that here that the um, field of view isn't very wide you might be able to just squeeze the entire constellation into a shot but um, everybody that watches my channel knows I shoot in real heavy light pollution in the city and um, this was done without a dark frame or any heavy editing or anything so the uh, light capture is really good and obviously at um, 50 millimeter on a crop sensor it's operating at 80 millimeter and using the rule of 300 that gives me six seconds of exposure time this shot was taken at just over five seconds and um, you can see quite a bit of nebulosity in the uh, Great Orion Nebula which is great f 1.8 is uh, is a, a really good aperture for uh, light collection so this lens is, is really good as a constellation lens so how is it for star trails? Well, it's kind of a narrow field of view, but it will work for star trails. I wouldn't use it as a Milky Way lens because um, such a narrow field of view. But let me show you this uh, short star trail video and give you an idea of what, what you might see. As you can see, this is uh, fairly constrained. I prefer 14 millimeter for uh, wide field uh, star trails myself. Something that really stood out was the signal to noise ratio of this lens. It captures a lot of light and with very little noise and that's a great thing for uh, nighttime photography. Uh, not a whole lot of vignetting either and um, it's really high contrast, great with color. So a common question I get asked a lot is how do I find pinpoint star focus without a focus ring? Uh, normally you'd have a focus ring with indicator marks that show uh, like the infinity sign but with a lens like this you should find a magnitude 4 or brighter star and go into uh, your live mode and if you don't see the star right away rotate the focus ring a little and um, it may appear because you can completely defocus a star and I'll show you that in this video clip that's coming up but um, once you get the star centered go into 10 times magnification and it's really easy to uh, to find pinpoint focus at that point another tip I can give you if you don't see the star in your live view is you may not have your camera settings adequate enough um, you want a really high ISO try about 3200 and put your shutter speed at about six seconds or so and you should notice that the stars start to appear in the uh, live view. And here's an example of what I mean by pointing at a star and it not actually appearing. Now I know it's there and it's just defocused. See as I rotate the uh, focus ring, it starts to slightly come into focus. So if you got your settings right and you think you're pointing at the star, make sure to rotate the focus ring slightly. So let's move on and go to the moon as a reference point for focal length here. Um, this particular video clip is in video crop mode and that's important to remember here. Uh, it's a little more magnified than what you would normally see but you notice there's not a whole lot of detail and um, that's because 50 millimeter even on a crop sensor operating at 80 millimeter it's not a good focal length for uh, any kind of uh, lunar photography or that sort of thing. So don't expect a whole lot for that. Um, this is just here as a reference to give you an idea. I realize most of my viewers are just interested in the um, astro side of it, but to give this um, 
lens of fair review, I'd like to talk about other things. And uh, this birthday cake was taken with all the lights off in the house, and it was shot wide open. And uh, you can see just how good of a uh, low light lens this is looking at this photograph. So here's an artificial flower and a close up shot of it. And what I'm trying to demonstrate is uh, edge sharpness. And you can see uh, wide open the lens, um, a little soft on the edges. So it needs to be stepped down, but that's typical with any lens. Uh, you really get a, a lot of uh, background blur, as you can see in this image. But if you look real close, the, um, the edge sharpness is it's a little soft, and um, but with the lens stopped down, you can you can accommodate for that. So if you're interested in this lens, you've probably come across uh, somebody saying it was a great portrait lens, and I'll have to agree with that. Um, anybody that's ever photographed children knows that uh, they're, they move around a lot, and it's really hard to uh, to get a good photograph of a child. Some people have a lot of skill in that area, and I don't, but um, at f1.8, being such a fast lens, you can catch those uh, really good moments um, in your photographs that otherwise uh, they'd be turning their head or moving or that sort of thing. So in terms of that, um, I think it's a really great lens. A great thing about 50 millimeter is on a full frame camera, it's roughly equivalent to human eyesight, and that's really appealing in photography. Now on the uh, crop sensor, you're getting the 80 millimeter, but it's still good uh, focal length for portraiture. And you can see in this photograph, this lens is really good for collecting color. There's a lot of color in this photograph, and um, that's great for a budget lens. So for my viewers, I highly recommend this lens as a constellation lens. At f1.8, it's really fast. It collects a lot of light and it does it quickly. It's got a great signal to noise ratio, really high contrast, a lot of color, just an all around great lens for constellations and you can't beat the price of it. And for everybody else, if you're watching this video and you're not here because of astrophotography, then um, I can tell you that just as a general purpose lens, it, it's great. Um, being so low profile, it's, it's wonderful to walk around with and, and not be so intimidating to people. Uh, makes a great street lens, makes a good portrait lens. It's a great low light lens. Uh, just overall value to price is amazing and uh, I really encourage you to go out and try it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I appreciate uh, everybody watching the video and uh, to all my viewers, clear skies.